This week on Cars and Things Restos, we do another unboxings. We've got a, we've got a present from a company that sent this uh, product to us. Let's open it up and see what it is. Good morning, guys. We're here at the uh, Holden Bar of War. Chinese or Japanese or something written on it. I'd say it's Chinese. What's it got here? www.gcprogcar.com. Uh, I did get an email from a fellow. I reckon this might be a, a um, diagnostic tool. An email last year, like asking me whether I'd look at look at his diagnostic tool. Yeah, it is. Look at in here. Alrighty, okay. <laughs> so they're uh, OBD two uh, and OBD. EOBD code readers. They've sent us a few of these. So there's one there, that one's, it's, this is the name of the company. It's called uh, CGSLULE. How do you, how would you say that? I don't even know. CG Salt, Solit, something like that. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Sorry guys if I've, uh, uh, Pronounce your name wrong, um, but pretty cool. So they've sent us uh, a few of them by the looks of it, which is good because I can give one to Mick. So I've got a couple of them. They're just code readers, so we can just plug them into anything and read a code. Um, what's this one? Multi system scanner, an SC530. There we go, it's um there's the cable there, plug into the OBD2 connector. And that must be your charge cable. Oh, it looks good. Alright, we might try that out. I might stick it on the, the old Bombador. I'll put a code into it and we'll stick it on the Bombador and see what if it works on that. We'll try that later. And it looks like we've got Dax Guts one here. This one looks a bit flash. Oh, now, really don't know too much about this company at all. Um, I just got sent an email saying, um, would we, they've been watching these videos for, for a while and would like to know if um, we would like to use their product. And I said, oh, I said, yeah, well, certainly wouldn't uh, mind having a look at it. And then, that was a while back, that was a fair while, a few months ago now. I didn't really say too much, I just said, yeah, yeah I'm happy to look at it. So they sent me a heap. So, <sighs> sorry guys, I think it's open. <sighs> Alright. This one 
going to wipe a screen on it. There must be a screen protector. Oh, it looks like, isn't it? Oh no, the screen's come off. Oh, it looks like. Yeah, that's it. Right. Stick that back in there. Look into what's this? All systems and all make scanner with uh, oil cell service light reset. No, oh, that's pretty cool. I probably uh, should read the instructions and see how it works, but I won't. I'll just like plug it in and apply. Well, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I do know how to use scan tools, so. Uh, that's pretty interesting. I'm pretty impressed with the amount of gear they've sent us. That, that's, uh, that's excellent. Well, thank you guys for sending that. I don't know. Shenzhi Sonite Technology. I'm not sure where they're from. Um, I would say they're they're based out of China. But that's cool. We're happy to try their, their equipment out on our products. Um, uh, the only thing is, I can really, with the amount of products, or well, vehicles that we play with, we don't play with a lot of, well I do. Um, I do uh, the odd late model car, only our own stuff really. Um, I suppose we've got mixed U that we can use it on, but look, if I've got the scan tools there, I can. I know how to use them, I know how to read codes, and I know how to, whoop, they should be yeah. I know how to, uh, you know, basically do all, the, all that sort of stuff. I suppose um, when it comes down to scan tooling, uh, or reading codes, um, really, a machine like this will only just read the code. Um, uh, it's not going to tell me how to fix the car, uh, the vehicle. It'll it'll point me in the direction I need to, to look to see what's um, what's going on. Um, uh, like you could get a code come up in this. Uh, I'm not sure what it reads. Say like a normal. 0061 code or something like that that comes up in a Commodore. Um, uh, I'm not sure of the number, say it may say misfire on bank uh, one, two, and uh, sorry, two, four, and six, or something like that. And um, then you've got to go and try and find why that is happening. It's not going to say there's a misfire on. Uh, on the driver side bank or uh, one, three, and five, and it's a V6, and so you've got to go and put new spark plugs in it, or you've got to put injectors in it because um, that's the issue. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. We, uh, Nick and I, bought a um, a VE uh, Commodore. It was quite a nice looking Commodore. It was a 2008 model Commodore pretty sure. Um, we bought it very cheap because the gentleman had spent that much money on it trying to get the experts, experts in town here at uh, Mildura, sorry, in town here at Mildura, I'm not going to say uh, the company, um, but the experts and they put new injectors in it, um, coil packs, they just went to town on it. Apparently this is what he told us and they could not rectify uh, the issue. Uh, it also had an ABS code in it and then no one could tell him, uh, well, no one could fix it for him and he was just over it and um, he just put it up for sale. He had it up fairly cheap, so Mick and I went and had a look at it and he said, it was a very, very nice color. The paint was excellent on it. Um, it had it was a uh, just an Amiga, but it had the SV6 wheels on it with a wing on it. It looked pretty pretty nice. 
Um, so anyway, we got it back here and uh, we found that the codes that he told us was in it was uh, misfiring on, on the uh, left bank, two, four and six. Uh, so straight away we went in and started uh, uh, searching for stuff, what we thought it might have been, cat converters can cause it. Um, we had a look at that, that was okay. Uh, we knew it had new um, spark plugs in it. We knew it had new coils in it. We knew it had new injectors in it, but we swapped them all over from bank to bank just to, to make sure this to, for ourselves. And um, and it still didn't fix it. And I said to Mick, he said, uh, by the age of this vehicle, the amount of kilometers on it, I think it was like 180,000 kilometers on it. I said, I can, Bet me bottom dollar, this is time and chains. It's going to be time and chains, a, a cactus on it. And um, I said, let's just stop wasting our time and pull the time cover off and check it. Um, oh, actually, no, first of all, we went through and replaced, swapped all the, um, the uh, oil gallery uh, sensors uh, that give it the VVT setup. We swapped all them over with another vehicle we had there and that uh, didn't change anything. So we uh, said, let's stop mucking around. We pulled the timing cover and it had jumped teeth on the timing cover. So um, just put a new timing chain on it. Boom, away she went, ran perfect. And uh, we were up and we were pretty happy with that. It took, took us, took Mick and I about four to five hours to place the timing chain. So, but you know, bit of work, bit of fun on the setback, that was cool. But what I'm getting at is scan tools can tell you what uh, is happening with the vehicle, but they don't tell you exactly what's going on with the vehicle. So they'll read the code and then it's up to that technician or that person who's looking at it to start diagnosing from there. So really all they do is give you a helping hand. Um, they don't go and tell you that um, you know, the time and change is stretched and that's why uh, we've got a misfire. They just say, I think what it comes up with is uh, misfire on um, two, uh, two, four and six, um, cam out of phase, um, things like that. Um, it was coming up with, I'm pretty sure, uh, on bank, right bank or something, I can't remember now. Um, uh, but yeah, so it took us probably we spent probably two, two odd hours on it, mucking around with it, and then just said, fuck it, let's bite the bullet and um, pull the timing cover. Because it wouldn't come up with an out of phase cam shaft if it wasn't, if that wasn't in the, that area. Uh, but anyway, it's what it is. All right, so what I might do is we might uh, chuck a, um, uh, put a fault code in a bombador and uh, chuck the scan tools on it and see what it reads, eh? Right, eh? We'll get stuck into it, eh? Let's see what happens. Oh, there you go. Here's the Bombador. This is Mick and I's um, VE Commodore we picked up fairly cheap. Uh, a bit like the uh, red one. The uh, customer, was he bought it for his son. He was a P-plater. And they had it and the engine... It, was in it, uh, time change went. Uh, so they took it to a local mechanic in town and they said it's easier to put a low K engine in it to do the timing change. I don't think so, but anyway, that's what they did. So they bought a low K engine for it and slipped her in it. And then probably six months down the track, or probably not even that, it started um, misfiring and running rough and uh, he took it to another uh, mechanic. Uh, I know all these guys, and so I'm not going to mention any of their names. Uh, so he took it to another mechanic, uh, not far for him, uh, and he said, oh, yeah, it needs time and change. The new engine needs time and change. And he just had enough. So he said, stuff it, I'm selling it and getting him something better. So anyway, I saw it and I knew the bloke, uh, messaged him, um, Offered him what I thought it would be worth because I had to fix it all up. Uh, and he said, come and get it, I'm over it. So we went around there, we fired it up and it was running like shit. Uh, misfiring really bad, just like the other one. 
and I thought I said to Mick, yeah, well, looks probably time and change, so all good. Let's um, do the deal. So anyway, I actually could drive it, drive it onto the trailer, and uh, we did the deal and we bring it home. The next morning, I slapped my old, uh, I haven't got it here, it's in my ute. I slapped my scan tool in it and uh, read the codes and it come up with misfiring on, I think it was 1, 3 and 5 or or 1, 2 and 5, something like that, I can't remember now. And I went, oh, that's a bit odd. Because it wasn't the normal misfire. Uh, I went, what's going on here? So anyway, I uh, first of all, I went, all right, let's check some things. So I checked the oil, oil was fine. Um, check the coolant, Ooh, over the cap, no water in it, what's going on here? So anyway, so I went around and f I uh, fired her up, and it's just firing away, and I know they started pouring water in it, and it took a fair bit of water, and uh, it started, the misfire started to clear, as soon as I got it full, the misfire went away. So I went in, cleared all the codes, just let it run, got it up to operating temperature, took it for a cruise, ran like a beauty, absolute beautiful. So I thought, oh, okay, so it was low on coolant, that was the issue. Um, so then I pressure tested it overnight and could not get one drop of water to, or coolant to leak out of it anywhere. Um, could not find any coolant leaking anywhere. Um, I went, what the hell, you know? So, uh, anyway, said stuff it. So I looked at it, it needed a drive belt, uh, needed front brake pads. Well, it didn't need them, but I thought, you know what? I'll put them in it anyway. And got it all roadworthy, and I've been driving it ever since. And it had, um, I just done the 75,000 K service in it, I'm pretty sure. Let me fire it. Let me check this. I'll fire it up because I've, uh, I've I've put a code into it. Why are they going off? So I've put a code into it. Well, let's see what goes. There, bang, it's come up straight away. Check oil. So it didn't take long to, to find a code. Uh, let's... Okay, so it's got 177... 1000 K's on it and when we got got it it had I think about 100 and I think it was like 160 something thousand on it um, I've done about 15,000 K's in it and hang on I need to turn this shit off I've done about 15,000 K's in it and it hasn't missed a beat the only thing I had to do is uh, regas the aircon because uh, I've been sitting around other than that it's been sweet all right let's chuck this scan tool on and see if it works you should have done the unpackaging, mate. I have done all that already, mate. Okay. This is, um, now we're going to... All right, people. Let's put her on the charger. We're just sticking in. This is just the handheld one. Well, they're all handheld, but this is a small one. What have we got there? OBD4, Hyundai. Don't know why I would want any of those. Why hasn't it got holding? Must think I'm a Ford lover. That's yeah, fucking right, yeah. that's fucking Jarvis, not me. Right, eh? Let's plug it in and see what code it comes up with, shall we? Yep, good idea. Okay, yeah, we're coming in. Check engine lights on. Oh, I can't sort of get let me in there. Yep. No, Check that's... engine light, yes please. Now we're trying to coach. Yeah, let's just. This is our new um, OBD reader from who? Crouchy? CG Solit. Um, Let's come back a bit here. It's a bit hard to see because it's really. Your eyes? Yeah, that probably doesn't help either. Yeah, yeah. that's all. So, um, just yeah, the code's on, found one, yep, we can read that. In the wrong engine. So there we go. So it's coming up with oil pressure uh, problem, low. Which you can read in the black. Yep. So, so 5022 is oil pressure low. Then we also have 
P0010 pending a camshaft position actuator problem. Alright, so they're the codes that it's come up with. So, then you got to, as a technician, you'd have to come around and try and find the faults. So, we look at the engine. Oh, look at that! There's a wire off. The codes out of it. And See if we can clear them. I would say you could probably save them. Yes, see, you can save them uh, if you want to. Alright, so what are you? Freeze frame. You can probably go and check it out. So, what I'll do now is we will erase, which is F3. Uh, yes, I want to erase them. Clearing. Turnkey. With the engine off. Okay. Current engine oil pressure switch sender A lean low. Oh, so I didn't erase because I didn't have the key on, that's why. Okay, erase done. System free. Fire it up. And we are as good as go. Very hard to get on the thing, but anyway. Uh, Try. It's not hard, people. It's mixed eyes. They're old. So it goes through a little uh, live darter there. Got a reflection too, which is a pain in the ass. Engine temperature, long term fuel. So this is a qualified technician who'd be able to go through here, and if he's got a problem with it, he would be able to look at it and go, oh shit, that reading doesn't look right. Um, especially if it come up with a code like it's saying air temperature, air temperature sensor out of phase or too low or too high, something like that. You can come in here and go, oh yeah, 39 degrees Celsius, and you could feel the air temp outside was 5 degrees, then you'd know that, well, there's a problem there, that's reading incorrectly. So these are the easy things you can, you can check. Yeah, it's got all the normal jargon in there. Pretty good little system. This sort of tool can get you out of this out of the crap pretty easily. Well, won't get you out of the crap, but it is. At least let you know what's it, going it, on. What the good thing about it is, uh, the average Joe Blow, like let's say Mick, not me, let's say Mick, um, jumps in the. Uh, Commodore with the wife and kid and they head off to Adelaide and he gets to fucking Turo and engine light comes on. So he rings Crouchy, oh my engine light's come on. I say, well you're fucked aren't you mate? You're going to have to take it to some bastard to have a look at it because I'm not driving fucking 300 kilometres to help you out. I don't even like you that much. <laughs> Fair call. <laughs> so if Mick had this in his car it could go, alright, I'll plug it in, and I pulled up a code, and it's saying oil pressure sensor code. And uh, I'll say, yeah, right, eh? no worries. I'm going to go into the long, into the history for me, and we could probably do this all over the phone too, I would say, Mick, can we now with fucking like, messenger? More than likely. Um, there's probably a uh, oil pressure one here somewhere. Yeah, there was before. Let's see if we can get to it. And it's oxygen sensor. The other thing you can probably do for you, if you had a crook oxygen sensor, it might say come up as a fault, and it gives you a bit of a um, thing to keep going. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know I mean, like you, you really you don't have to panic that much, people, even though the engine lights come up. Yeah. But you, you need to know, is it going to really be a bit of a, a head fuck to keep driving the car or do I need to, to stop and get it to a technician straight away? And, but even just to get a code read could cost you 100 bucks nowadays to get a code read. You know, if you had to do that two times, there's the price of this machine, you know, you're done. You've got it here and you can read a code and, and if it comes up, oh shit, it's only a... An accelerator um, 
position code. And why has that happened? Oh, because I had my foot on the brake at the same time as I pushed the throttle in, and it can throw a code if it does that, right? So you can just clear that code and keep on motoring along. Instead of going and paying some bloke... 100 bucks just to have a look at it. some bloke on the side of the road. Oh, here comes another fucking gear. He's a good 100 bucks for me. I'll just clear it for them and send them on their way. Good little tool to have. Yeah. It's the code reader over there, which will just read the code out to you so you can read the code and clear it if you need to. Then you keep on travelling. Good little thing to just chuck in the glove box, I suppose. All right, well, there you go. Thank you guys for sending these product to us. Um, I'll probably chuck one of those code readers in Mick's car. So you can have one of them and chuck one in uh, your missus's car. And we've got these to read any codes from any cars that come around the workshop and see if there's any issues. All right, well, that'll do. Thanks for coming along and watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.